Welcome to the second video as part of the Raspberry Pi series on this channel. If you followed the previous video, we are going to boot up the Raspberry Pi for the first time using the image that we wrote on the micro SD card. But if you still need to install an operating system image on your Raspberry Pi, please take a look at the first video I did by clicking here on this suggested video, or you can also access it in the description. With your micro SD card inserted into the Raspberry Pi, go ahead and start the device. Since we're booting it up for the first time, you'll start to see a lot of events happening as it loads everything. Once it's finished, it's going to ask you for login credentials. For those of you that don't know, the username is Pi and the default password is Raspberry. Both are lowercase, one word, and contain no spaces. The next part is very important. Once we're logged in, we are now going to kind of customize it to our liking. What we'll do is set up the Raspberry Pi with our own password, set a host name for it so it's not just called Raspberry Pi, set a time zone so the device has an awareness of your local time, set a static IP so your Raspberry Pi has a dedicated IP address in your local network. And again, this just makes life a lot easier in the future, especially if you're going to be doing any development projects on it. Finally, enable SSH so you can remotely access it and give commands to it using your computer or mobile device. First, let's run the following command, sudo raspy-config. The Raspberry Pi will then bring up its configuration tool. Let's change the password first. Using the arrow keys, go to system options and then hit enter. Now do the same thing and select password. You will now be asked to enter a new password for the Pi user. Go ahead and type your new password and then hit enter. You'll then have to retype the password to confirm. Okay, perfect. So now we don't have to worry about using the default password. Next, we'll change the host name. This way, we'll be able to not only give a custom name to the device, but it's also how your Raspberry Pi will be found on the network. From the configuration tool, select system options again, but this time, we'll choose the host name option. Go ahead and change the name of your Raspberry Pi to whatever you want and then hit enter. Perfect. Now that we've defined a host name, we'll change the time zone and make sure it's local to our time. From the configuration tool, select localization options and then choose time zone. First, locate your geographic area. In my case, it's the US. Next, select your actual time zone and then hit enter. In my case, it's Eastern time. Very nice. So now that our Raspberry Pi is aware of our localized time, we'll enable the SSH server. From the configuration tool, choose interface options and then select SSH. When it asks you whether you'd like this to be enabled, choose yes and hit enter. You should now get a confirmation. Hit the escape key on your keyboard and you will exit the configuration tool. We're almost done with the setup and there's only one more thing left. We'll now set a static IP. If you're happy with the way your Raspberry Pi is defined on the network IP wise, then you can skip to the next part. But if you're hoping to do any kind of development where you need your Raspberry Pi to have the same IP permanently, I would highly recommend doing this. First of all, you need to know the IP address you wish to set for the Raspberry Pi as well as your network gateway. If you have no idea what this is, go to a Windows machine on your network and start the command line. Now run the ipconfig command. I suggest making note of the gateway here since the Raspberry Pi refers to this address as routers. Now let's turn our attention back to the Raspberry Pi. Run the following command and hit enter. With your arrow keys, Keep going down until you get to the example static IP configuration. What we're going to do now is remove the hash or pound symbol from interface F0 to enable the static IP config. Next, do the same thing for the next line for static IP address, but we're also going to give it a custom IP that we want the Raspberry Pi to use. 
Finally, we'll remove the pound sign for the static routers line and put our network gateway address there. This is the same value that we saw earlier from the Windows PC's ipconfig command. At this point, we need to save the file. So what we'll do is hit Control X. Once it prompts us to save, just hit Y and then hit enter. Finally, we need to reboot the device for our new settings to kick in. Run the sudo reboot command so that the Raspberry Pi reboots itself. You'll want to give it a minute or two to fully reboot. You should now be able to SSH into the Raspberry Pi using the host name that we gave it earlier. You can also use the static IP that we set to do the same thing. I hope this video helped you set up your Raspberry Pi with settings to your liking. And if you followed the static IP portion of the video, at least its IP address will now never change and you can access it remotely from any device. Thanks for watching. And for more on Raspberry Pi, please consider subscribing to this channel.